We live in a toxic world, but we don't have to live in toxic bodies. Every day we are exposed to small but significant amounts of toxic metals. Over the years, these metals accumulate in our tissues, slowly poisoning us. Because the toxic effects of these metals on our health are gradual, we often attribute them to aging, never knowing the real cause of our health problems. In this audio presentation, we will discuss how toxic metals affect our health, how and where we are exposed to them, and how to safely get them out of our bodies. The toxic metals we will address in this presentation are mercury, lead, aluminum, nickel, arsenic, cadmium, uranium, and calcium. You heard correctly, calcium. Under certain conditions, calcium, a mineral required for our health, can become a toxic metal. More on this later. First, let's look at how we are exposed to the other seven toxic metals we just listed and what kinds of problems they can cause. The first toxic metal we will look at is mercury. Mercury is one of the most deadly substances known to man. It accumulates in the brain, nervous system, heart, kidneys and endocrine glands, and can cause depression, autoimmune disorders, memory loss, tremors, anemia, and heart attacks, among other things. Studies done by the University of Calgary have shown that when mercury comes into contact with nerve tissue, it can actually melt the myelin sheath right off the nerve, causing the nerve to shrivel in a matter of seconds. What is even more unbelievable is that this highly toxic metal is actually put right into our mouths in the form of dental fillings. If you have silver fillings in your mouth, you may be interested to know that these silver fillings actually contain as much as 50% mercury by weight. In fact, according to the Environmental Protection Agency, there's enough mercury in one silver filling to force the closing of a 10-acre lake. The practice of using mercury in dental fillings began in 1833 when a pair of French entrepreneurs introduced it to American dentists. Most dentists initially dismissed the idea as dangerous because the poisonous effects of mercury were already well known. Those few dentists who chose to use mercury in dental fillings were called quacks. This derogatory term was an abbreviation of the word Quacksilber, which was German for Quicksilver, the common name for mercury at the time. Over time, however, using mercury in fillings became the norm, not the exception. And those dentists today who choose to remove mercury from their patients' mouths are themselves called quacks. While modern dentists claim that the mercury in silver fillings doesn't leak into the body, Scientific tests show that each mercury filling in our mouth releases on average 17 micrograms of mercury into the body every day. But fillings aren't the only source of mercury in our lives. Mercury is also found in adhesives, air conditioner filters, cosmetics, fabric softeners, felt, floor waxes and polishes, laxatives, seafood, talcum powder, and tattoos. A hundred and fifty years ago, the only people exposed to mercury at toxic levels were the hat makers, because the felt they shaped into hats contained high levels of this toxic element. Their continual exposure to mercury destroyed their brains, causing them to slowly go insane. This gave rise to the expression, mad as a hatter. These days, we are all exposed to mercury, and with senility and other mental disorders on the rise, we should ask ourselves, to what degree is mercury to blame? The next toxic metal we will address is lead. Lead is found in chocolate, canned foods, newspapers, toothpaste, cosmetics, plastics, batteries, gasoline, old paint, insecticides, pottery, ceramics, and worst of all, soldered pipes. This means that every glass of water we drink and every shower or bath we take increases our lead exposure. Lead accumulates in the brain, liver, bones, kidneys, and spleen, 
where it has many negative effects, but none more insidious than its ability to alter behavior and intelligence. For each 30 micrograms of lead in our bloodstream, we can expect a 10-point drop in our IQ, as well as a decreased ability to deal with new environments and social situations. Let's turn the toxic metal discussion to aluminum. Public water utilities universally use aluminum to remove debris suspended in the water supply. This is because when aluminum is added to water, it causes the little bits of dirt that are naturally suspended in the water to stick together and fall out of solution, making them easier to remove. This process is called flocculation. Unfortunately, this process continues in our own bloodstream. You see, our bloodstream also has little things floating around in it, like red and white blood cells, antibodies, hormones, and platelets, to name a few. Flocculation may be a good idea in our drinking water, but when our bloodstream flocculates, it can cause serious problems, such as strokes and heart attacks, for example. Aluminum is used to get the dirt out of the drinking water, but what is used to get out the aluminum? I would personally prefer a little dirt or sand in my water than toxic aluminum. Another common source of aluminum is antiperspirants. When aluminum is applied to the sweat glands under the arms, it literally glues them closed, preventing toxins from naturally leaving the body in your sweat. In women, once under the arms, the aluminum goes through the lymph nodes right to the breasts. It is likely that the high rate of breast cancers and other breast disorders we are seeing is to some degree a result of women unwittingly poisoning their own breasts on a daily basis. Other sources of aluminum include baking powder, feminine hygiene products, toothpaste, baby formula, antacids, and of course aluminum foil and pots and pans. Aside from its effects in the breasts, aluminum also accumulates in the skin, bones, brain and kidneys, and can cause Alzheimer's disease, memory problems, dementia, aphasia, ataxia, convulsions, and anemia. It may be hard to fathom, but the average person will eat and drink over three pounds of aluminum in his or her lifetime. That's the equivalent of 292 square feet of aluminum foil. Is it any wonder that Alzheimer's disease is on the rise? Let's move to nickel. Nickel is found in stainless steel cutlery, pots and pans, coins, dental fillings, and batteries. Given its use in cutlery and cookware, we are all exposed to nickel with each meal. Each fork and spoonful of food carries a trace of nickel with it. It accumulates in the bones, kidneys, liver, lungs, immune system, sinuses, and the brain where it causes genetic disease and cancer. One of the most common problems associated with nickel exposure is skin conditions. Many people with chronic skin conditions are actually experiencing chronic nickel toxicity, and no amount of skin creams or lotions will ever work until this offending toxic metal is removed.